Hey, this is David for Big Bits, and in this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of important updates to TradingView. One is just another drawing tool that's kind of helpful, and the other is yet another feature added to Pine to help us with our development of our scripts and more customization. It's going to be really nice to have this feature finally. Uh, it's something we've been able to do, but uh, we've had to use workarounds to accomplish. But essentially, Go ahead and get straight to the point. You can see you have color inputs now in Pine. This means you can have a setting that will save the color value that you want to use in your script. And this is good because now you don't have to use like a drop down list and have people choose a text value or like a number value of the color and then you have to do some sort of conversion or a function in your script. Now you can just save the actual color data type in a variable and you can use it in your script and I'll show you how we do that in just a minute. But then they also added this cool new drawing tool. This is what they call the path tool. Uh, it's got a nice little gif here showing you kind of how it works. It's just allowing you to create a series of lines in a row and it's got some settings down here to where you can kind of change the ends of it as well as some of the other line features that you're used to. But let's go ahead and take a look at the chart on what we have here. This is the Bitcoin chart on one minute. And what I've done is I have plotted a 200 period moving average on the chart. And let's zoom in here just a little bit so we can see some uh, choppy price action here because I wanted to show you how the script works. You notice that when the price is above the moving average, the moving average is green. When the price is below, the moving average is red. And we've done this using our color inputs, but what's really cool is instead of having these hard-coded in your script or using some complicated drop-down with limited colors, you can actually have this now as a setting, so let's change this to yellow, but actually we can also allow it to set the transparency, hit OK, and now you have a yellow line there, and since this is saved as part of the indicator, it's going to show up every time as yellow for them until they change it or remove it and re-add it. Now, that's really cool, but let's take a look at the code really quick, because uh, on this channel we like to discuss the actual code itself. So let's scroll down here, zoomed in. Now you can see what we're doing, <clears throat> excuse me, what we're doing is we're actually saving this input as a variable, which is a color data type. Now a data type is just exactly what it sounds like. It's a type of data that you can use. That means that this variable, instead of it being an integer or a decimal value or a string of text, this is actually a color, and it's going to store that hexadecimal value, I believe, which is what you see up here uh, as part of it. So when you're down here, what you're doing is you're just saving that input as a color data type variable. Then we calculated our moving average. Then we plotted the moving average and we use something that we've done before where we've either replaced the color uh, conditionally. So we do our condition to check to see whether the price is above the moving average or not. If it is, now we can just use the color above input, which is green by default. And you have to make sure that your type on your input is set to input.color. That's new in the namespace as well. And if it's not, the price is not above the moving average, then you use your color below. And since you can change these as a user in your settings, you don't have to create some function within the code now to interpret what the user would want. Or, well, also, you don't have to hard code these anymore, which is really nice and really convenient. And it, I made a point of adding to uh, the discussion on Twitter, and I've mentioned this before in my videos, is that I would really like to see something that I call input groups and uh, conditional inputs. So what I mean by input groups is we have two here. What I would like to see is a collapsible area on the input section to where uh, by default, if you wanted to, you could have this minimized and not show these values. That way you can save some screen space because on a lot of our other ones we have tons of variables in there. So that's going to be really nice if they ever get that in there. And also conditional variables, that oh, well, conditional inputs I should say, that uh, will use their default value unless um, you have a certain condition met to have it shown and allow the user to customize it as well. So that's 
getting pretty complicated and um, could cause some confusion for a lot of people with the conditional stuff. But I believe the input groups are a really nice addition uh, that we can hopefully look forward to in the future. Now, that is it pretty much for this one. I just wanted to give you a pretty simple example on how that could actually work and how you change the colors. And you can always, of course, reset your settings. And now we have our green and red again. Now, the other tool was the path tool, and I need to find it for the first time. I haven't even gotten on here to find the path tool. Here we go. It was next to the brush here. So if you're having trouble finding it as well, go to the brush. But uh, let's test this out. I haven't even played with this before. This is the first time I'm doing this with the video. So we can see the price go down, go up, went down, up, down, up, down, up. So we'll leave it like that. And I probably should have read how to actually end the line. Uh, to s let's select the starting point and then mark out the next point. So just gonna to exit the drawing mode, you just need to double click the end point. So there you go. Even I learned something on this video. So let's let's do our path again. Let's be a little bit more uh, generic here. There we go. Okay, so I double clicked it. That took us out of the drawing mode. You can see there are some settings for this particular drawing. You can choose line width, style, and something that's a little bit different are the ends. Uh, you can see on the right end, it has an arrow. If we wanted to, we could remove the arrow. You should have seen that the arrow here changed. Of course, you can also add an arrow on the left-hand side as well. So you can see it's now got an arrow over there. So that's pretty cool. A couple of nice new additions to Pine and TradingView drawing tools, something that I think is pretty useful. Uh, the path is pretty nice, but uh, I really like the color inputs, and I like a lot of the changes they've been making lately. They've been doing a lot of work on Pine, and it's really impressive stuff. But that is it for this particular video, but uh, there is one more thing, actually. They did add a couple of things to the scripts, so now when you're on your profile, you can actually look at commented and liked scripts as well, which is pretty nice if you're wanting to go back and see uh, which scripts you've commented on and which scripts you've liked as well. And I believe you also can get notifications now on the scripts that you've liked uh, when there are changes made to them. So you can like somebody else's script and get a notification when they publish an update, which is really handy. But yeah, that's it for this video. If you would, go ahead and check out the profile on TradingView. Give it a like and follow. Also, um, if you haven't already, please consider uh, if you're considering the premium plan on TradingView to use the referral in the description of the video, it's going to help me out a whole lot. And I think you get something out of it as well. I think you even get $30 towards yours or $30 worth of credits towards your own account or something like that. I, I don't really remember right now, but if you would use the referral, that'd be great. Uh, other than that, that's it for the video. You can always check out the tutorial scripts and all the other videos we do where we do a lot of Pine script and trading related videos and crypto related videos as well. But if you like the video, please leave a like on the video. And while you're down there, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and you'll get updates on when we have new videos and updates from TradingView and crypto and other things. But that's it, guys. Have a great day.